Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's the Cube covering OpenStack Summit 2017. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation, Red Hat, and additional ecosystem support. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, joined by my co-host John Troyer. This is theCUBE, worldwide leader in live enterprise tech coverage. Coming into the show this year uh, here at OpenStack, discussion of edge was something that uh, had a little bit of buzz. Last year's show in Austin, uh, the telecommunication, all the NFE solutions were definitely one of the highlights. Happy to welcome to the program a first time guest, Beth Cohen, who is the SDN and NFE network product strategy at Verizon, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, yes. All right, so, so Beth, I mean, we heard Cloud in a Box, Edge, all those pieces on the keynote Monday. Uh, people are excited, uh, you know, telecommunications. I worked in telecom back in the 90s. Uh, I'm excited to see that people are, you know, getting involved and looking at this. But before we get into all the tech, just tell us briefly about you and your role uh, inside sure. Verizon. So, um, I actually, um, work at uh, Verizon as a new product strategist, so I come up with new products. So uh, so my I do uh, product management. This is actually my second product for Verizon. The previous one was Secure Cloud Interconnect, uh, which is a very successful product. Uh, who would have thought that you know connecting privately to the cloud would be a good idea? It turns out everybody <laughs> thinks that's an excellent <laughs> idea. Um, but I worked in telecom back uh, for GTE back in the 1990s and for, through BBN. So I've been in this industry for for a while and, and, and I've always stayed kind of on the cutting edge of things. So I'm very excited to be working on these cutting edge projects within Verizon. So. All right, so speaking of cutting edge, let, let's cut to the edge. <laughs> cut to uh, the edge. And uh, <laughs> give our audience a, a little bit about you know what, what the announcement was, uh, the actual sure. product itself. Um. So, uh, Virtual Network Services is a product. Uh, we uh, originally announced it in July uh, with a, uh, a universal CPE box. Uh, that box uh, was not a what we're calling a white box, which I think is the industry term now. Um, that one was based on the Juniper NFX 250, uh, which is uh, we call gray box. Uh, so it's uni using the Juniper NFX uh, software. Um, but the new new announcement is this is truly a white box. It's an x86 box. Um, it's generic. Um, any x86 will work. Um, and in fact, the product has. Uh, um, we realized actually working with customers um, that some customers want to have a very small box, very small footprint, uh, low cost, uh, that only supports maybe two, possibly three NFEs, uh, virtual network functions, um, all the way up to our largest box is 36 core. So we have four core at the, at the bottom. So that's used for the coffee shops or the small retail uh, type uh, functions where they're only looking for security and routing or security and SD, SDN or SD-WAN um, or you know whatever. So, so very small, compact um, use uh, all the way up to 36 core, which can support you know 10 or 12 different functions. So load balancing, routing, security, you know whatever you want, <laughs> cloud in a box. <laughs> there's so many pieces of OpenStack and they've been for years talking about the complexity. Um, this really, if I understand it right, I mean it's OpenStack at the edge in a you know small box. So how, how do we fit such a complicated thing in you know a little box and what kind of functionality does that bring? You know, what, 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 what will customers get with it? So um, obviously it's, you know, we didn't take all everything, right. of course. So, you know, it does include uh, Neutron for the networking, and it does include Nova and and um, you know the computes, um, and and so it has the core components that you need for OpenStack. And why did we choose that? Because OpenStack really gave us that you know, consistent platform across both out at the edge and also within the core. So we are building the hosted network services um, platform, which we're using internally as well to, to host our, you know, to support our, our network services. And we're also um, supporting customers on the same platform. So that gives us the ability to to give a customer experience both out at the edge and within the core. So, ha of course, everybody wants to know the secret source. How did we cram that in? Containers, so we containerized OpenStack. Uh, one of the requirements is it had to be a single core. 
So it is a single core in the box because, of course, particularly in a small box, you want to leave as much space as possible for services that our customers want because the OpenStack is the infrastructure that supports it all. That's great. I mean, th so Beth, this, this was that was one of the highlights of the whole show for me, right? Uh, I like when tech blows my mind a little bit, and the idea of something that we might have run in, a, you know, some embedded Linux or some embedded OS before now is actually running a whole cloud platform uh, in a box in my office uh, was amazing. As you're looking at the the center of the network versus the edge, um, it's is that one, to, to you and, and to network ops, is that one big cloud? Is that a cloud of clouds? What's cloud kind of, of the clouds. architecture? Yeah. Yeah. Is, is it, it fog? It's, <laughs> yeah, you could say it is a fog. Um, because one of the things when you, when you pull the network out to the edge like that, um, you know, Verizon lives, I mean, we live and breathe networks, and networks are WANs, wide area networks, right? They're everywhere. So we live and breathe that every day. So traditionally, as I mentioned in the keynote, is that you know, cloud has been sort of data center centric, right? And, and um, that changes the equation, because if you think about it, most data center centric clouds, the network ends at, there's some mystery thing that happens at the end, right? It just goes to that, you know, network router, you know, NNI, network to network, net router, and it just kind of disappears, right? Well, of course, we know what's on the other side. Um, so what we've done is we've said, okay, we have functionality within that data center, but we've expanded that out to the edge. And we understand that you can't just have everything sitting in the cloud and then rely on that edge to just work. So you need to move pieces of it out. So it's not reliant on that inside data center. So there's tools back there, but if that data center connection goes away, that function will still work out at the That's edge. That's great. <laughs> uh, you talked about both uh, SDN and uh, you know, NFB, a big conversation at OpenStack uh, for the last several years. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about maybe the, the state of, of SDN and NFB and, and how uh, how you all are looking at that and, and are, we, are we are we there yet? Uh, what do we what <laughs> what, what, what yet? places do you still see we need to go? Uh, so um, you know when I when I work with the marketing team they were like oh we have to use this NFV t term we have to use the SDN and um, uh, you know when I talk to customers inevitably they're like what is this NFV stuff? They have no idea. Um, so, so, you know, really at the end of the day, I see NFV as a telco thing. You know, absolutely we need it, but we have to translate what that means to customers. Because all that back end stuff, as far as they're concerned, that's magic. That's the magic that we deliver the services. Those packets just arrive, they do what they're supposed to do. Um, so, I say, okay, network services is really what you're talking about. Because they understand, oh yeah, I need that security, I need that firewall, I need that WAN optimizer, I need that load balancer. That they understand. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> a, you know, with my telecom background, you know, I think of there's lots of hardware, there's lots of cabling, there's the challenges that you have with wireless, and we talk a lot about 5G. Um, you're talking about software though, and it's delivering yeah. those services that the customer needs. So right, is that what they ask for? Is it, I, I, I need these pieces and now I can do it via software as opposed to before I had a, you know, we talked, it's the appliances to the software right. move. What are the, your customers asking for and you know, how are they embracing this? Well, so our customers are very excited. I, I, I can't think of a single customer that I have gone to that have said, why would I do that? <laughs> they're all saying, no, this is really exciting. Um, and uh, so what they're doing is they're really rethinking the network because they're used to having stacks of boxes. So the appliance base, you know, the, that was really pioneered back, you know, of course Cisco sort of pioneered it back in the 90s, but I remember talking to Infoblox back in the, um, oh, like early 2000s, you know, when they came out with the DHCP DNS appliance, and I was like, wow, that's so cool. Um, so this is sort of the next generation. Um, so why do you need to have, you know, six different boxes that do, you know, a single thing? Why don't we just make it a cloud in the box and, and put all those functions together and service chain them? That gives you a lot more flexibility. You're not stuck with the, that proprietary hardware, um, you know, and, 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 and then worrying about, um, I mean, I can't tell you how many customers want to do this for tech refresh. They have end of life equipment 
the, the vendor's saying, forget it. <laughs> this is 10-year-old equipment. We're not supporting it anymore. <laughs> yeah. But what are the sec security implications here, though? We've seen you know, the, the, the surface area of where attacks can come from just seems to be growing exponentially. Uh, I think I go to the edge, I've got way more devices, there's more, more vulnerabilities. You know, your last product you said was security. How, how does security fit into all of this? What are you hearing from your customers? How do you partner with other people? So you know? security is absolutely paramount to our customers. Um, as I mentioned in the, in the talk, there was a, we did a survey of our customers, security was absolutely the, the top priority. Um, but what, but security is a lot more sophisticated, as you said, than it used to be, and and the the um, the vectors for attack are are much more sophisticated, um, and so it's not enough to just have a firewall, you know. That's, you know, your attack is, you know, the the squishies inside and the hard outside. Forget it. That's just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this you, is the, not the, there. The moats are gone. They're in the castle. <laughs> they're yeah. in the castle, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, um, so for us, the, the, it's very appealing to our customers with the idea that they can put the security where they need it. So they can put it out at the edge, and some of them do want it at the edge, and we give them the choice of setting up a sort of a minimal basic firewall or a full-featured next-gen firewall. Uh, we also find customers kind of like the brand names, so we offer Palo Alto, Fortinet, Cisco, Juniper, and others will be coming. You know, so that appeals to them. You know, they tend to be a shop of one all or on the other. All on the others. software basis. All on the, the software basis, right? Kind of. Yeah, all virtual appliances, right? Um, and, and you know, at the end of the day, our customers don't actually care about the hardware. You know, for sure. them, it's it's the service. <laughs> I wanted to take it over to OpenStack itself for a little bit. Um, you know, we, the great conversation here this week has been something about modularization, um, talking about the ecosystem, talking about containers, both the app layer up on top and, and the packaging layer <laughs> down below, which is kind of really cool as well. Um, how are you seeing the OpenStack community uh, engage with the ecosystem, um, be available to you know different use cases like this, right? Slim it down, you know, take take what you need, leave the rest. Different. It, it, at, for a while, the conversation was there were so many projects. Uh, and uh, about everything. And do you feel like uh, OpenStack is going where we need it to go now in terms of, uh, you know, again, a, a usable partner and community to work with? Um, I do believe that because, uh, you, so th my product is really a portfolio if you think about it. So it's a portfolio of services and, and I view our use of OpenStack in the same way. So it, we're really taking that portfolio of OpenStack services and pulling, you know, putting together the package that we need to, um, you know, to deliver the services. So what's out at the edge, that package of OpenStack services at the edge is not the same set of services as what's within the core data center. There's some commonality, but, you know, we've chosen the ones that are important to us for the edge and chosen the ones that are important to us for the core. So I think that the OpenStack community is really embracing this, this notion and and we really welcome that that uh, thing now what I'm finding is that the vendors that we're supporting you know that that in the ecosystem at the application layer are still struggling with okay do we containerize do we you know do we support what do what are how do we support it you know I can't tell you how many vendors I've gone to and I said you know, if you want to be in our portfolio, you know, and obviously most of them do, you know, Verizon's a big company, um, you have to be virtualized. You have to be able to support, you know, run under OpenStack. And, and they have to get past that, <laughs> that issue. <laughs> Beth, I noticed uh, in some of your social feeds, you've attended some of the women uh, yes. at OpenStack event. I wonder if you have any comment on the, the events there and diversity in general in the community. Um, so. One of the things I love about OpenStack is it's really, um, really gone out of its way in within the uh, open source community in general to really focus on the on the the value of diversity, and and it really does track the number of women um, that are you know there's a there's a metric that says the percentage of women at every uh, summit and it's going up. Um, and the women of OpenStack uh, community focus on mentoring, um, and it's not just women because mentoring is very important. Um, but it really allows. But but women are, have sort of special challenges, and and minorities have special challenges as well. And and we really try to embrace that fact that you know you do need a leg up if you're if you're not a 50 year old white guy. <laughs> 
Beth Cohen, really appreciate you jo joining us. Congratulations uh, on, on the keynote, the, the product, and wish you the best of luck uh, you know, going forward. Thank you. We'll be back with more coverage here from OpenStack Summit in Boston. For John and myself, thanks for watching theCUBE.